this mic on? It is now. Good morning, everyone. Happy Sunday. Time to settle in. Time to corral the sheep. Come hither, I say. Come hither. <laughs> happy Sunday, everyone, and welcome to uh, Fredonia First today. We're so happy that you're here. Today is Communion Sunday, so I just want to put that out there. So if you are worshiping uh, from home with us to get your juice and your bread or a cracker or something like that so that when Communion time comes, you can share with us uh, from home. Uh, and I'm going to save the rest of our announcements until later, except one, to say that after church today, there's goodies in the back. So I don't want to forget that little happy announcement. So the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all of you. Yes, thank you. Uh, Father, we just ask you to be present with us today, and we thank you that you are. We thank you for your love and the way you embrace us every day. Fill our hearts with all that you have for us, empty it of self, and uh, fill us with all of your love and your guidance. We just thank you in Jesus' name. And now let's share in our prayer uh, together this morning. It's in the bulletin, and it should be up there, yes. Join me. Lord, we know that you forgive us and guide us, conforming us into the very image of Christ. Teach us your ways, O God, and lead us in our journeys. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now, friends, it is time to get rid of the clutter of the week. Whatever your craziness you have is going on, it's time to let it go, to just allow yourself to be open to all the Lord has for you today. So shut it all out for a little while or put it up at the altar, whatever you choose to do. But now let's move into a time of worship and peace. And if you would be so kind, Nick.
Wow. <laughs> wow. Let's all stand and join our choir in, in our time of worship. Welcome home, Jan. Nice to see you. Welcome home, Jim. I saw you back there, too. praise a song uh, praise this morning is called shine jesus shine and i don't know if the girls are ready this morning but when we were practicing earlier a couple of the girls were in the back doing a dance to this first song and it was just so beautiful so i encourage them if they wanted to dance um, through the praise music that they could so i don't know if you'll be able to see them but it's really cute
Lord, it is our greatest desire to have our hearts be like yours. What a world changer it would be if all of us had hearts like Jesus. If all of us were the hands and feet in G of Jesus and the world around us, boy, would this world change. Father, as we come together today in our time of prayer, we are just so grateful to be in your presence. We are grateful uh, that you love us. We are grateful for the the way you've created this place for us to come and worship. We are thankful, Lord, for each person here. We are thankful for our, our children and our families. And we're thankful, Lord, for answered prayer, Lord, for the continued healing of Jack and and his uh, ability to walk, Father, you just keep moving in his body and healing him. And Lord, we praise you and we thank you that Jen's scan came out clear with no change, Father. And that's a wonderful, uh, a wonderful praise. We thank you for Mary's daughter who, whose uh, surgery was successful and Mary's travel was safe. Lord, there are so many things to be thankful for, so many praises that I might not even know about, but they're on the hearts of our people. So, Father, we lift those praises up, and we just thank you for your many blessings on us. And we thank you, Lord, for the support of uh, Flood Buckets, our mission of the month for the way you've you've brought in the resources so that we can send resources out to those who need them. And we thank you, Lord, for, um, I thank you, Lord, for Reverend Ricker, who will fill in for me for a couple of Sundays while I go and visit my family. I thank you for that. And today, Lord, you know, with all the good that there is, with all the good that you bring to our lives, Lord, we can't help it but consider some of the things that are difficult or that are on our hearts. And, you know, today, Lord, we just, um, I think of Sarah, uh, Brenda's daughter. I, I think of Sarah and, and what's happening in her body and her physical health. And right now, on behalf of our whole congregation, I'd like us to just put our hands up like this as though we were receiving, and Lord, that we would receive your healing mercies on Sarah, that you would touch her body, Father, and bring healing to her body and answers to the doctors, Lord, so that she could live uh, pain-free. Lord, that you would touch her body right now, Lord, that your name would be glorified in the healing that happens in her body, and that she would be lifted up knowing that she has another church family that praying for her. Father, that's we, we invite you in to that place, Lord, of healing for Sarah. And we think of those, Father, who are, uh, who are alone or are isolated or living in nursing homes or by themselves in their homes and, and they're lonely, Father. We ask you to move into those places and bring them comfort, Lord. But we also ask you to move the hearts of the people around them to reach out, to say hello, to send a card so that they know they're not forgotten. Lord, we think of those who are still battling in Ukraine. And Father, we just pray that you would be present in each situation. And we thank you for the work that you're doing there and the people of faith that remain a remnant, even in the midst of difficulty. In their lion's den, Lord, they are in the lion's den as we speak. And we just pray, Father, that you will stand present with them as you did with Daniel. And we think about those who've been um, victims of, the, of acts of violence and hatred and unkindness, Lord. And change the hearts of your people, Lord, so that they would be kind. But heal the hearts of those that have been hurt let them know that they matter to you. You say it in Psalm 139, that you knew them, you formed them before they were in the womb, Lord. You know who they are. You know each person. So, Father, we lift up those folks and ourselves to you for those moments of isolation and loneliness. And, Lord, I think about Byron Mead, Byron and Kitty, and Byron has been moved into hospice at uh, County Home. So friends, send cards, send love, send flowers. Pray for Byron and Kitty and continue to lift up Mason's daughter, Brittany, as she navigates through her healing process. And now, friends, I'm going to ask if you have a name on your heart or a praise, lift it up right now.
think of those who've had loss, that you'd comfort them. I think of new babies waiting to come out and meet us. We can't wait to meet them. I think about people who are in life changes right now, transitioning from one job to another or one place to another. I think about praise because I see grandchildren here. Thank you, Father, for that. I think about the college students that are here and ask your blessing on them. And Father, that you would just continue to walk with us, be with us, love us, and have us walk with you. We lift up all these things, and we lift up our hearts and our lives to you in the strong and loving name of Jesus Christ. And all of God's people said, Amen. Thank you. Thank you for bringing us into worship. And you know, I was going to dismiss the children to Children's Church, but I'm going to have them come up here for just a minute. Come on up here for a second. I, I want to talk to you before you leave. Everybody have a seat right on there or right on over there. So today, out here, we're going to be talking about Daniel in the lion's den. Who's heard that story? Sorry, that was me. So I have very quickly, if you can, can you tell me what the story is about? The story is based on when King Nebuchadnezzar's three other wise men, not Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, came up with a kind of a bad rule that anyone who worships anyone other than the king shall be thrown into the lion's den. Daniel knew this risk, and then he was praying to the Lord God of the heaven and earth. Thank you. So in this, he got thrown into the lion's he den. He got for thrown it. into the lion's den for doing the right thing. And guess what God did? God saved him from the lions. But then the people Sermon that came done. up with the rule <laughs> got thrown into the lion's den, and they were not so lucky. All right. So I want to backtrack just for a minute because I understand that, um, and Matthew, I'm going to direct this to you because we want to pray especially for you before you go, and I want to read you a scripture. I understand that sometimes you as kids are going to go into school and you are going to try to do the right thing. You are going to try to do the good thing even when everybody around you is doing the wrong thing. 
And sometimes people are going to be mean to you in school, or they're going to they're going to say mean things to you, or they're going to talk about you, or they're going to cast you out, just like they did Daniel and the lion's den. But Daniel remained strong, and he remained good. And I want to remind you of something, because Matthew, I understand, especially right now, I understand that in school you are trying to be a Christian, walk your faith, and that some of the kids are really giving you a hard time. And I want to remind Matthew right now and each one of you kids of this scripture. It's in Matthew 5. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Jesus says this. Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets, they, in the same way they persecuted the prophets who came before you. Did you hear that? That scripture's for you kids today. That's to encourage you because sometimes it's going to feel like a lion's den out there. And just like in the story of the lion's den, God provided an angel in that space and held off the lions. He closed the lion's mouth. So today, church family, because you never think of our kids going out there and having such persecution, but they are. They are, especially if they're choosing rightly. So I really wanted to take the extra minute today and pray for our kids. So let's all do that. Let's bow our heads. Father, you love these children. They are yours and you are theirs. Father, sometimes we don't realize they're sent out into the lion's den. We don't always realize that people can be that unkind. Protect our children. Please, God, protect our children. And God, thank you for giving them the courage to be like Daniel, to do the right thing, even when it's hard. So, Father, we just thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, which one of our brave Daniels would like to lead us in the Lord's Prayer today before we dismiss the children's church? Who did it last time? Well, you haven't had a turn in a while. Come stand up next to me. Talk nice and loud because we have old ears. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be my name. Thy kingdom come, I will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from you. That I in the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. 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 Children can be dismissed to children's church. Grown-ups, take a, a second to say good morning to one another. Doing all right? Yeah. Hmm? We got we got news on Connor. Well, tell me about it later. Okay, I gotta do this. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna introduce you. Yeah, Thomas. Oh, we have to get you a mic. Tom is going to pull that over for you so you don't have to hold on to it. So this morning, uh, as you know, we've been going through the book of Daniel, and Ronnie and I have been kind of tag-teaming in this book um, because we both bring different insights to the same story. And um, so we're going to give Ronnie a few minutes to give us a little bit of an intro uh, to the chapter that we're in. And I want to encourage you, like I have every week, if you want to be part of a really good Bible study, Tuesday mornings, Ronnie Lafferty, be there, be square. Yes? Good morning. Oh, is it on?
Is it on back there? Okay, speak, okay. speak into your mic. Okay, so as you know, <clears throat> our group <clears throat> that meets on Tuesday mornings was studying the book of Daniel this fall. And so Nat Nettie and I have had many opportunities to have conversations about it. And if I could, and this is probably true of all the books, uh, what I see standing out in this book is a story of faith, of courage, and of integrity. So last week we learned that Daniel's three comrades um, had stood up to uh, the king, King Nebuchadnezzar, and um, he, they defied him. They, they refused to bow down before him. They were very humble. They were men of integrity. They were not trying to cause a riot or anything like that. And they were thrown bound in all of their Middle Eastern garb with turbans and everything into this blazing furnace used for, um, for uh, firing bricks and pottery. So they go in, they're thrown in, the guards die instantly from fire and smoke and from heat and smoke. And Nebuchadnezzar sees four people in the fire. Three he threw in, bound, Three walk out. Somehow the Lord provided a shield for them because nothing even smelled burned or singed. So that happened last week. God proved himself faithful. The king gave the God of the Hebrews recognition for the miracle and gave the men positions of honor. Sometime later, the king had another dream, and it was about a tree. And Daniel is again called in to interpret the dream. And uh, the dream is not a good dream. <laughs> and Daniel says, King, you could avoid this by being good, by doing the right thing, by humbling yourself before God Most High. And the king declines, and out of pride, he spends about seven years with mental illness, living out like an animal in the field. And during that time, different um, family members uh, managed to rule Babylon. And they have found that there, archaeologically, that there is a period of time where other people were signing documents and, and where King Nebuchadnezzar did not seem to be in a place of authority. He finally bows to the Lord God, and he is instantly healed, and he resumes his place of leadership. <clears throat> now, Babylon in the Old Testament is often referred to as a place of evil. It is in Genesis, it goes all the way through the Old Testament and into the New Testament, and we read about Babylon um, in Revelation. So it's really important to understand this. It was a really evil place to live and to work. The um, authorities were brutal. They used a variety of techniques and scare tactics, which we are learning about for punishment. We have seen several of them already. There were several kings in Babylon after Nebuchadnezzar. Um, Belshazzar was one. And <clears throat> after Belshazzar, the Medes and the Persians, there were, there were others, small, small ones, everything from a few months to a few years. They were on the throne and managing. The Medes and the Persians joined forces. Remember the first dream, the silver? That's the Medes and the Persians. They joined forces and they conquered Babylon. They did it by uh, blocking up the Euphrates River and redirecting its path. And then they just walked into Babylon on dry ground on the riverbed. So they took over that. And then um, where we pick up in chapter 6, the Medo-Persians have conquered, uh, just as in the first dream, Darius is king, or at least he's in charge of that particular province. Daniel's been in captivity serving Babylon and all the different kings for about 60 years, which puts him at about 80 years old. Naturally, there is jealousy because he is a Jew, a foreigner, in a top leadership position. He's one of the top three that serve the king that manage all the provinces, and this is now the Medo-Persian king. Because of Daniel's wisdom and integrity, the other advisors couldn't find a legitimate reason to have him removed from a position of authority. So again, 
they throw him under the bus, they create a rule. Um, this chapter documents another critical event or challenging event in um, Daniel's life, Daniel in the lion's den. And I did a little bit of research about lions in that area. That's actually Iraq today. And um, lions were highly respected and there are statues of them. They had the symbol of strength attached to them. And there are even on some of the statues, uh, like a saddle, where kings and important people could ride them. So for the lions to have been in a cave in Babylon, it had to have been a man-made cave. You've seen pictures in the news of that area of Iraq, and it's pretty flat, and it's pretty sandy. There's not caves for them to uh, den you know, with their offspring or anything like that. It had to be a man-made one, and it, there had to be an opening high up so that the lions would not be able to get out. And I'm going to let Nettie take over. As Ronnie said, it would have been a man-made uh, cave. So there it is. The opening would have been at the top, and there's a course a rendition of Daniel sitting in there surrounded by the lions who look pretty peaceful. Were you done with your thought, Ronnie? <clears throat> okay. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So piggybacking on what uh, Ronnie had to say, I'd like to share in our scripture today, which comes from chapter 6. As soon as I get it open here. Okay. Sorry, folks. <clears throat> you know, as we saw this morning with Matthew, our kids, you don't often think of our kids having to be Daniels at such a young age or being persecuted or picked on for being good kids. But in our chaotic world today, oftentimes, you know, with things that are going on in schools and on the news and in society, uh, we're finding it more and more difficult <clears throat> to walk in our faith, to, to be the hands and feet of Jesus. It, it feels sometimes like you can be everything but Christian. You can say that you're from any other faith background or any other belief, but it feels like when you say you're a Christian that there seems to be some opposition. And that's kind of what was happening to Daniel. He wasn't saying he was a Christian, but he was sure was following God. He was following God just like we try to follow God, just like Matthew was trying to follow God. <clears throat> and this story uh, is, the basic lesson is this. It's a man who continues to be faithful, as Ronnie said, no matter what the cost, he's going to be faithful. And not only is he faithful, but once again we see that God is faithful to him. He didn't stop the men from being thrown in the fire. A consequence happened, but he protected them in the fire. Once again, we see a man being thrown to the lions. Have you ever been thrown to the lions yourself? Have you ever had maybe a work situation or something like that where your friends just, like with Matthew, he goes into school and he's a good boy and he talks about Jesus and they pick on him. They throw him to the lions in school for standing up for who he is. And sometimes that can happen even in a marriage. One person can be a believer. Another person maybe isn't a believer. And so the one person who is the believer is trying to walk the walk, but they take a lot of guff or, f or, or uh, punishment sometimes from the person who's not the believer. I've seen it in marriages, you know. Uh, a wife might be the believer, the husband isn't, and he picks at her all the time, calling her goody two-shoes, or you're this, or you're that. So even in those everyday relationships and places, we have some choices to make to be like a Daniel, but to also know that God is present with us in them. So here it is in chapter 6. <clears throat> Darius the Mede decided to divide the kingdom into 120 provinces, and he appointed a high officer to rule over each province. 
The king also chose Daniel and two others as administrators to supervise the high officers and protect the king's interests. Daniel soon proved himself more capable than all the other administrators and high officers because of Daniel's great ability then, God made plans to place him over the entire empire. Then the other administrators and high officers began searching for a fault in Daniel. They were jealous. Daniel's getting elevated up because he's doing the right thing, and now these guys are like, wait a second. He's already being elevated. He's a Jew, just because he's a goody two-shoes, you know? <clears throat> so uh, they start to search for a fault in the way Daniel was handling government affairs, but they couldn't find anything to criticize or condemn in him because Daniel was faithful. He was always responsible and always completely trustworthy. So they concluded our chance of finding grounds are nil for accusing Daniel. And <coughs> for accusing Daniel will be in connection. The only way we will be able to get to Daniel is in connection with the rules of his religion. So the administrators and the high officers went to the king and said, Long live King Darius. This is a lie they're telling. We are all in agreement as administrators, officials, high officers, advisors, and governors. Number one, we already know they weren't all in agreement because Daniel wasn't there. So they weren't all in agreement. That the king should make a new law that will be strictly enforced. Give orders that for the next 30 days, any person who prays to anyone divine or human except you, your majesty, will be thrown into the den of lions. They're, they're appealing to his pride. Nobody can be worshipped for 30 days but you, your majesty. Very cunning. <clears throat> or they'll be thrown into the den of lions. And now, your majesty, issue and sign this law so it can't be changed. An official law of the Medes and Persians, like Ronnie was saying, can't be revoked. So King Darius signed. He was deceived, but he signed, which means it couldn't be revoked. But when Daniel learned that the law had been signed, because, of course, he wasn't there, he went home, and he, listen to this. Daniel learns that this law has been signed, that if anybody worships, worships any other god except for the king, they're going to be thrown into the lion's den. What does Daniel do? He goes home, and he kneels down as usual. He knelt down as usual in the upstairs room with its windows open towards Jerusalem because he prayed three times a day just as he had always done, giving thanks to his God. Then the officials went together to Daniel's house and found him praying and asking for God's help. Well, of course they went. They knew he was a... He, was, uh, he did it by habit and, and by devotion, so they knew they were going to catch him. So they went straight to the king and reminded him about his law. Didn't you sign that law that said for the next 30 days any person who prays to anyone, divine or human, except you, your majesty, will be thrown into the den of lions? Yes, the king replied. That decision stands. It's an official law of the Medes and the Persians. It can't be revoked. Then they told the king, the man Daniel one of the captives from Judah is ignoring your law. He still prays to his God three times a day. Well, hearing this, the king was deeply troubled. It doesn't say he's angry. It says he's troubled. Because don't forget, the king liked Daniel. And he got duped into creating this law. So hearing this, the king was deeply troubled. And he tried to think of a way to save Daniel. He spent the rest of the day looking for a way to get Daniel out of the predicament. He was trying to find a loophole. In the evening, the men went together to the king and said, Your Majesty, now this is evening, right? They came to him in the morning, now it's evening, so obviously the king is procrastinating. In the evening, the men went together to the king and said, Your Majesty, you know that according to the law of the Medes and the Persians, no law that the king signs can be changed. 
So at last, the king gave in and gave orders for Daniel to be arrested and thrown into the den of lions. And the king said to him, <clears throat> to Daniel, may your God whom you serve so faithfully rescue you. So a stone was brought, placed over the mouth of the den, and the king sealed the stone with his own royal seal and seals of his nobles so that no one could rescue Daniel. Then the king returned to his palace and he spent the night fasting. He refused his usual entertainment and couldn't sleep at all. He was really bothered that he had been taken in by these guys. Very early the next morning, the king got up, he hurried out to the lion's den, and when he got there, he called out in anguish, Daniel, servant of the living God, was your God whom you served so faithfully able to rescue from you from the lions? Daniel answered, long live the king. My God sent his angel to shut the lion's mouth so that they would not hurt me. For I have been found innocent in his sight, and I have not wronged you, your majesty. The king was overjoyed and ordered that Daniel be lifted from the den. Not a scratch was found on him, for he had trusted his God. Then the king gave orders to arrest the men who had maliciously accused Daniel. He'd thrown them into the lion's den along with their wives and children, and the lions leaped on them and tore them apart before they even hid, before they even hit the floor of the den. Then King Darius sent his message to the people of every race and nation throughout the world. One testimony of one man who, who stood faithful to God and it's already affecting many around. He says, peace and prosperity to you. I decree that everyone throughout my kingdom should tremble with fear before the God of Daniel, for he is the living God and he will endure forever. His kingdom will never be destroyed and his rule never end. He rescues and saves his people. He performs miraculous signs and wonders in the heavens and on earth. He rescued Daniel from the power of the lions. So Daniel prospered during the reign of Darius <coughs> in the reign of Cyrus the Persian. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Now, if you look back at verse number 10, it says that when Daniel heard that the law had been signed, he went home and he knelt down as usual. Now, again, Daniel doesn't make this huge screaming protest. He just quietly goes home and he continues to do and be faithful. Now, he could have compromised, right? What's given up one prayer hour? What's, what about you, if they had just made that decree? Would you have the courage to have just gone home and continued to be faithful to God? Or would you have said, you know what? I can let go of this. It's okay. I can let go of this little piece of my faith. I can let go of this little piece of my routine. If it's going to mean I'm going to be thrown into the lion's den, you could rationalize it. Well, I'm going to do a lot more good if I'm alive, so I'll just not do this. We all have times where we have to make a choice, and that choice might land us in the lion's den. Maybe it is in your marriage. Maybe it is at work. Maybe some young people think that they have to compromise their faith or who they are in order to be successful and to move up the ladder. Or maybe if you have friends and you're a young person, like our kids, they think that they have to say and do the right thing or pretend that they're not who they really are because then their friends won't like them and they'll be mean to them and bully them in school. And it happens with adults too. But see, Daniel, he chose to remain faithful. And because he remained faithful, God was faithful to him. We are going to be in the lion's den sometimes. Count on it. 
but know that you're not going to be in the lion's den alone. There was an angel that came down and closed the mouth of the lions. So friends, we will, as believers, and believe me, it's getting harder and harder to say you're a believer. It's getting harder and harder, I imagine, to be a college student and be the one that stands out and says, you know what, I'm not watching that porn tonight. I'm not going to stay out all night drinking. I'm going to choose to do something different. Can you imagine the resistance, the peer pressure that our young people especially are encountering today? You're all friends with one another. You all hang out with one another. Most of you are like-minded. But what about our young families and our kids and those who are still in school? What is your lion's den? What is your lion's den? What is an area in your life that you might be compromising in so that you don't end up in a lion's den? What in your life and in your faith walk are you letting go of so that you can fit in and not be in the lion's den? <clears throat> what situation would improve in your life if you did it God's way instead of compromising? Daniel's life was a real testimony for us but it was a testimony for those that lived with him. You know, there is another great example, too. Who's our great example? Jesus. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd like to read something from 1 Peter for you, and then I'll, we'll I'll go into communion. It's 1 Peter uh, 2. He reminds us of something. He says, friends, I, I warn you as temporary residents and foreigners. In other words, we're just visitors here. Our real kingdom is the heavenly kingdom. Our real leader is God, just like it was for Daniel. He was always cognizant of that. To keep away from the worldly desires that wage war against your very souls. Be careful to live properly among your unbelieving neighbors. Listen. Then even if they accuse you of doing wrong, they will see your honorable behavior and they will give honor to God when he judges the world. And then a little farther down it, it says, it is God's will that your honorable lives should silence those ignorant people who make foolish accusations against you. And then the next page. But remember this. If you suffer for doing good and endure it patiently, God is pleased with you. Daniel cared most about what God thought of him. Because, and then because of that, God, he had peace. When I know God is proud of me, I have peace. And believe me, sometimes as a pastor, we take some pretty hard hits. You'd never think it would come from sheep, but you'd be surprised. I've seen pastors in other churches where it was so hard they left because they chose to do the right thing. They ended up being in the lion's den. And they remained faithful because they cared more about what God thought and doing right than even the people sometimes in their church who wanted their own way. So here it is. So you might suffer for doing good, but endure it patiently because God will be pleased with you. For God <coughs> called you to do good even if it means suffering just as Christ suffered for you. He is your example and you must follow in his steps. Listen to this. He never sinned. He never deceived anyone. He did not retaliate even when he was insulted, nor threaten revenge when he suffered. He left his case in the hands of God, just like Daniel did, who judges fairly. 
He personally carried our sins in his body on the cross so that we could be dead to sin and live for what is right. By his wounds, we are healed. Once you were like sheep who wandered away, but now you have turned to your shepherd, the guardian of your souls. Psalm 1820 says, The Lord rewards me because I do what is right. He blesses me because I am innocent. So friends, I don't know what your lion's den is. I just know that at some point you're going to end up in one. And you're not alone in it. And I encourage you to be strong and to have Jesus and Daniel to dare to be a Daniel and to continue to walk in faith and do what is right even when the world around you is doing everything wrong. And just like God was with Daniel, he will be with us. God can overtake any lion that might come your way. Amen? Father, we thank you for your word in Daniel. We thank you for his testimony and his example. We thank you, Lord, that um, you are always with us and that those lions done places, even though they're hard, Father, we're not alone in them. You are with us. And Father, today as we move into communion, the Lord's table, Lord, we ask you to be present with us and in us. And if, if we do need healing in any places in our soul today, Lord, that you will bring healing to those places through the taking in of your body and the cup. We just uh, thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> Before we share in our anthem... I'd like us to share in our affirmation of faith. You'll find it on page 881, and then we will move into communion, and then I would like to invite the choir if they'd like to come down first. <clears throat> so 881 in your hymnal if it's not up on the board. Let's affirm what we believe. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he came to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. May the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let's give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and you breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through your prophets. And so, with your people on earth and all of the company of heaven, we praise your name and join in their unending hymn, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you. And blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. Your spirit anointed him to preach the good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, he fed the hungry, and he ate with sinners. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, you delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and you made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. 
when the Lord Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always in the power of your word and Holy Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took the bread and he gave thanks to you and he broke the bread and he gave it to his disciples and he said, take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup and he gave thanks to you. He gave it to his disciples and he said, drink from this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith that Christ has died, Christ has risen, and Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here. On these gifts of bread and cup, make them for us to be the body and blood of Christ that we we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your spirit make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to the whole world until Christ comes in final victory. Through your son Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Orion made this loaf of bread, by the way. Had to use it today. Because we are one loaf, we who are many are one body. For we all partake of the one loaf. The bread which we break is a sharing of the body of Christ. The cup over which we give thanks is a sharing of the blood of Christ. Amen. I'd like to invite our choir if they'd like to come down for, to be served first. And Nick, if you'd like. If not, I put communion cups down there for you. Um, Pastor Debbie, I'm going to ask that you please come sanitize your hands as they come down. And once again, I will be handling the corner of one corner of your bread. I'm asking after I dip it that you take the other corner that gives less touching in between. Um, and Gretchen, I wondered if you wouldn't mind going and getting the kids. <coughs> cup of salvation given for you, friend. Yes. Brenda, body of Christ and the cup of
the little cup. Okay, ready? The body of Christ and the cup of salvation poured out for you. Thank you, Pastor Debbie, for helping me serve. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now let us all stand together and share in our doxology and our closing hymn and our closing blessing. And now we'll share in our closing hymn and our closing blessing for one another. another as we close out our Sunday.
blessing is simple. 2 Corinthians 5.20 calls us to be ambassadors for Christ in this world. I pray his blessing on each one of you is his wonderful ambassadors and representatives. Go out and be those good people and be the hands and feet of Jesus. And may he richly bless you. Amen. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may use this time to listen to the post loon, or you may use this time to exit the church. And remember that hospitality made some really nice goodies today. So if you're feeling a little snacky, they're back there. Thank you. 